I spot a guy beside the ditch, he's trying to hitch a ride, and like that I decide to break, make a gesture, come on over, enter, rest your weary feet, you must be beat. A lot depends for him on whim, my own, knife honed and keen, whatever way I lean, come time could dictate his living or dying. Terminus uh, came to me when uh, everywhere I went in Dublin I kept seeing cranes and I had the idea of a part of a story taking place on top of a crane. So it became a, a story of three people which started in a very kind of realistic setting but which by degrees became more and more uh, a fantastical supernatural story involving you know demons and souls and devils and all that kind of stuff. The character I play in Mark Arrow's Terminus is named the letter C. And he is a guy who, he's a very intensely shy individual um, when we first meet him. And what he does is he sells his soul to the devil for a, the most beautiful singing voice in the world. But the devil does the dirt on him. And uh, unfortunately, because he's so shy, he can't actually sing in public. So what he does is he then hates the world because of this and then uh, becomes a serial killer. My character is an ordinary woman who embarks on an extraordinary odyssey one night after receiving a phone call at the Samaritans where she's working from a young girl. And this um, starts her off on a journey to try and help this girl. And on this journey, she encounters very grotesque dark characters and, and events over the course of the evening. And in the course of the monologues, we also discovered that in fact she had done something to betray her own daughter. And in fact, trying to help this young girl is an attempt to try and alleviate her own guilt. We meet my character when she's just finished work and she is telling us about her day-to-day -day routine, which is the same every day, mundane things. She goes and gets her dinner, goes home, watches the TV and uh, we get the feeling that she's uh, something has happened to her in her past that she's kind of retreated back into herself um, and her friend calls her up and asks her to go out for a drink by the end of the night she ends up on a crane one thing leads to another and she ends up falling off the crane and being caught by a demon in terminus it's Everything is, everything is a rhyme and rhythm. It sort, of, it sort of bubbles off the page. And it's very interesting for an audience to sit there and to watch, because there are three monologues, but it's, it's a landscape of words in which he just goes. He begins a tale then after a hesitation that doesn't fail to keep my attention. He'd been seeing a girl for a year and it's clear he adored her so much so he ignored her board, I suppose, when it came to propose and thought, that's okay, it's her way. And when he asked her father why she had changed her mind, his eyes half blind with the tears that lined his face, the father braced himself and said, look, I know this is tough, but fuck, you just weren't good looking enough.